Well, well, well. Looks like Netflix said you can't share your ID and log in with all your friends. But what you can share is this fucking episode by going to www.nttfgpod.com. I'm Rock. And I'm Archie. Well, our opinions, eh, they might not matter to some, but... It's a podcast. Immature, crass, trashy. And those are their good qualities. These poor schmucks are a couple of IQ points away from eating paste. But when it comes to music, sports, and comedy, well, that's all they know. You're listening to Not These Two Fucking Guys. Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. Yo, Rock. What's up? It looks like we have a pissed off Eddie Trunk. Oof. Wow, is he pissed off. You don't piss our boy off. You don't piss our fucking boy off. You don't do it. Looks like the whole Rock community is pretty pissed off, and uh, I think it's very, very understandable. And I think I know why. Oh, the Grammys. Jesus fucking Christ, the Grammys. Oof. Obviously, this year we lost one of the greatest most influential guitar players of all time, Eddie Van Halen. Right. And that's, and that's not like, that's just not like our opinion. No. It's pretty much not debatable. No, it's, they're, they're, when it comes down to it, you're really not going to find anybody that says, well, I mean, you know, he was all right. <laughs> there, there's no, there's, <laughs> <laughs> you, now you might get somebody out there saying like, I, I didn't like Van Halen. I don't like rock. It's not my thing, which is fine. But that person probably would also say, Oh, Eddie Van Halen? I know who he is. Do you know what I'm saying? Except David Crosby from Crosby, Stills, and Nash said, what do you think of Eddie Van Halen? He said one word, meh. Oh, (laughs) Christ. And then he he later recanted. It was like, yeah, I was just being a dick. And he's like, he was fucking great. So it looks like that the Grammys had five months to come up with something, something spectacular. You could have had anything. You could have had somebody... Uh, play his music you could have had a band you could have had a huge uh a video memoriam for him and what happened they played eruption for 15 seconds i think it was like 15 seconds in the middle of four performances for others that they lost yeah and uh that's it for eddie fucking van halen are you fucking kidding me are you kidding me? I'm just I'm just going to do I'm going to read a tweet here uh, from his son. The Grammys asked me to play Eruption for the memoriam section and I declined. I, I don't think that anyone could have lived up to what my father did for music but himself. It was my understanding that there would be an in memoriam section where bits of songs were performed for legendary artists that had passed. I didn't realize that they would only show pop for 15 seconds in the middle of four performances for others we had lost. What hurt the most was that he wasn't even mentioned when he they talked about artists we lost in the beginning of the show. I know rock isn't the most popular genre right now, and the Academy does seem a bit out of touch, but I think it's impossible to ignore the legacy my father left on the instrument, the world of rock, and music in general. There will never be another innovator like him. Bro. Now, let me tell you something. I feel like his son Wolfgang was being very, very, very nice with that statement. Correct. My statement would have been if I was uh, Rocco Van Halen, <laughs> you fucking cocksuckers. How the fuck dare you? Dare yeah. you? Yes. Not have a fucking at least 10 minute memorial to my dad who was a guitar legend. Yes. Legend. Yeah. What a shame, dude. With the, you know, the, the, I'm telling you, these, these fucking award shows, are, and again, we sound like old bastards that are all like, in my day, you should have. I get it, but like, dude, like, not for nothing, it wasn't like a regular rank and file guitar player died. This was somebody who's influenced millions yeah. of guitar players, bands, what have you. But what did what did you get there on the Grammys? You ever hear some WAP? (laughs) Cardi B and what's her name? The Stallion, Megan the Stallion. Yeah, I think so. Performing wet ass pussy. Wow. Wow. 
And, and, and you know what? Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> it, was a, it was a shit like, performance in my opinion. Oh, my God. If I want to see two hookers rolling around on stage, I'll go to Atlantic City. You know, I mean, <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, dude, listen, I'm, I'm all for artistic uh, creativity, whatever you want to do. It may not be your cup of tea, but – and that's fine. But, like, how do you how do you not have a yeah, shipment to Eddie Van Halen? It's bullshit. Do we, do we sound old? Yeah. Like, a little bit? Yeah, I look old. You look great, though. <laughs> no you know, shit. Real quick, can I just read something? Uh, yeah. Chris, Chris Jericho tweets, Hey, Recording Academy, no tribute to Eddie Van Halen tonight. You and your bullshit awards can go fuck your ass. <laughs> And don't <laughs> wait, wait. Here's the best. Here's the best. And don't ever try to give my band a nomination. I'd rather win a Razzie Award. I don't know what a Razzie Award is. Is it a porn award? I don't know. Um, but this is the best. Somebody, somebody, somebody writes. I don't think you have to worry about getting a nomination, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Real quick, the Razzie Awards, the $4.97 gold spray painted Razzie Award is handed out to otherwise great talent who should know better than to associate with their name with subpar projects. Eh, whatever. Okay. But <laughs> I think that's fucking hysterical. It's like, hey, Jericho. Hey, hey, Jericho. Eh, don't worry about, don't worry it, about it, pal. Yeah. Sadly missed. He got, he got fucking shafted. The family name got shafted, especially at the Grammys, the music awards. It is what it is. It sucks. It's gonna go down in time. I, like, I, I feel like the fucking Grammys are getting boycotted more and more. I feel like it's just for like pop music these days, though. It, I know they, they just. <sighs> and then when you see the rock genres and who's in the rock genre for yeah, like, you're like, this is rock. This is. I don't know. Oh, I don't okay. know what year it was. Maybe it was like mid to late nineties. I think the Grammys jumped the shark when it came to rock music when it said best metal performance, Jethro Tull. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I mean that that basically tells me everything I need to know about the fucking Grammys. Yeah. Well, let's hope in the near future that they smarten up, start putting more rock acts on, and start recognizing a little more of our heroes. They were gonna boycott Mr. Potato Head. Because of his pronoun. Okay. But they're not boycotting wet ass pussy. What do you say about that? There's some whores in this house. <laughs> There's some whores in this house. Aren't you ready to go, pal? Oh, I'm ready. Our guest tonight is an actress, model, stunt woman. You may know her from the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, Miss G. Bassone, a.k.a. Hollywood. How are you? <laughs> you said that right. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm good. Very good. How are What's you? What's going on? We're, we're well. Um, how are you doing during the pandemic, first and foremost? You know what? Yeah, that's the always the first question everybody asks. So good. So far, so good. Good, um, good to hear. Yeah, I haven't gotten sick at all. How about you guys? Doing well. We haven't gotten sick. Knock wood. Yeah. Knock that's good. Wood. I know exactly, right? Yeah. Good, good. I know people I know people who have, as we went through getting through the holidays, that mm. people that we knew that were closer to us were getting ill. Gotcha. You know, it was yeah. like getting closer. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. I know. Uh, this is getting close. Oh. So. <laughs> Wait 15, 20 years from now when you look back on this and you're going to be know. like, holy shit, what a weird time that was, man. When you, you I know, know, and we lived through this. So that's going to be yeah. like, yeah. I actually saw a funny meme today. It said, uh, you know, in 20 years, you're going to be seeing a commercial saying, if you had the COVID 19 vaccine and, you know, you're experiencing yeah. blah, 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 you know, you should uh, <laughs> yeah. do for whatever. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's Sorry, funny. Your limbs fell off or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I'm not sure about that yet. Well, glad to hear you're doing well. Yeah, I'm good. That's a good thing because I travel. I've been traveling pretty much every month. Um, 
because I'm in Nashville right now and I have a house in my, I'm from California. So mom okay. and dad, uh, my fa- my sisters, nephews, friends, and some work is in California. So um, I've traveled back and forth. And yes, I've been tested a few times just because, you know, you just never know. But I'm always taking those precautions to be careful, especially yeah. in front of our elders, our mom and dad. You just don't. You know, I, I just. Mm-mm. We had to get Rocco tested, but it wasn't for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that's a uh, different episode. <laughs> but he looks good, though, doesn't he? <laughs> don't, give, don't give the big reveal yeah. yet, no. Yeah, he looks pretty healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're up to a lot these days. I, I've seen, obviously, I, I, I've been a fan for a long time. Uh, we'll talk about the, the glow days a little bit, but uh, tell us what you're up to now. I saw a really cool. Uh, Soap and stuff you sell. Tell us about that company. Uh, Rocco, you're so sweet. First of all, you're too young to remember Glow. No. Both of you. <laughs> Wish I was. It's well, true. Hey. You guys are you're lying. Well, Wish I was. You, you know how to get to a lady's <laughs> heart. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Just telling the truth here. Um, so, um, well, yeah, the soap thing started, you guys, two years ago. So this is before pandemic. This is not dealing with washing your hands and trying to make money. You, do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, sure. Something. This, this was something that I started two years ago, and I'm like, I love homemade soap, and I love that there's no preservatives in it. I love that it's good for your skin. So, I just picked up a bar of soap. I'm picking up one of these right here. I picked up a bar of soap. Uh, I was in a mall, All and right. these soaps happened to look really pretty. And I'm like, God, on, this soap looks so good. I'm smelling it. I'm reading what was in it, and um, I'm like. I bet I could make something like this. So I put some mental notes in my head. I went home. I did a lot of due diligence. I looked on the internet because first of all, I don't know anybody who makes soap. I have no idea. So I started getting a bunch of books, reading books, looking at YouTube videos, and then it was time to do it. And I did it. And I was a nervous wreck going, oh, my God, am I going to blow up the kitchen? What's going to happen here? (laughs) So so Because there's one ingredient that you use to make soap, and that's sodium hydroxide and that is this lie l-y-e yeah. it's lie and okay. lie makes soap so basically everything in my soaps uh, is pretty much for like one two maybe six ingredients and all that is, that's cool this is organic coconut oil olive oil shea butter castor oil the sodium hydroxide and then water that's it that's all you need to make soap uh, you put it in a mold wow um you can cut it up the very next day and then it has to cure and what that means is all the water that's inside this piece of soap here you want it to evaporate so it's a harder bar of soap when you get it you don't want you know but yeah. because there's no preservatives in it you guys it's really good for your skin and um, it's not going to dry your skin out so that is how that happened and i decided to name the company hollywood botanica and i spelled botanica with a k just because it was different you yeah. know yep, um, yep. and so yeah so you and became here i am an so overnight so. chemist <laughs> <laughs> yes i people call me heisenberg <laughs> like, like yeah you're making you're making the blue meth she's making the blue yeah. soap <laughs> yeah there's some blue soap yeah it's kind so, of blue so for the people I out there that blue. uh explain what that is in your hand real quick for the people out there you have the bar of soap what's it look like see these right here you guys this one here's a blue one right uh, here yes, this one's marble. beach this is a yep that is a bar of soap this one i made yesterday this is peach Look at that, how pretty that is. It doesn't uh, have to look that pretty. Double it layer. can look this pretty, or guys, it can be plain yeah. just like that. See how plain that bar is? Yeah. Just simple. So I do simple, and they're all different. You know, everybody likes the men like the peppermint, kind of like the mint more, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Or activated charcoal, that's good too. I just make all different kinds. And this beach, when everyone loves this beach, it smells like the beach. Yeah. I think are you the guys, what? Uh, are you beach? B, B is in boy, beach. Yeah. That's this one. I call this one beach baby. Are you guys on the East Coast or where? We are, we are Jersey boys, yes. Oh, you're getting a snowstorm coming up tonight, right? Uh, Unfortunately, yes. I know. Gross. I know. Gross. So be careful. Don't drive in that. Be fucking careful. Well, you probably know how to drive in it. I don't. <laughs> I fucking hate snow. Straight up. Yeah, I don't like it either. I'm here in Nashville and it's been pretty cold here in Nashville. So we'll be getting cold rain, but we're not going to get the snow like you kids are going to get. How so do you, I'm sorry. How do you feel about Nashville when you're, when, when you're behind one of those drunk peddling, uh, oh, things downtown, rocket, rocket, rocket. 
Uh, I don't get behind those. I just go around them real quick. Uh, people are having fun. They're not having as much fun now these days just because of, you know, a lot of the, the bars are open here in Nashville uh, and they close at 10 o'clock. And the only reason I know that is because I took an Uber the other day from the airport and I asked my Uber guy, I said, am I your last ride? Oh, no. He goes, bars are closing in 15 minutes. I'm heading up. I'm oh, like, OK. Yeah. OK. So I don't go downtown too much. It's too crazy. Yeah. You know, if, my, if my friends are playing, uh, my boyfriend's got a gig, maybe down there, then we'll go and check it out. But right now, nobody's done nothing, gotcha. you know, for what, nine months now? Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, we went yeah. there actually for uh, for Archie's bachelor party a couple I of knew years you were back. Say that. Yeah, um, and we're in a band, so we we you know, obviously we just love live music, and it, we, of course, I, it was astounded by every place had it was awesome. You know, multiple awesome. floors. There's a band on each oh, floor. And it, I know it, it exactly so what cool. corner you're talking about too. <laughs> oh, fabulous! Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. but people have a good time. Did you guys have a good time? Great time. Perfect. Great by time. The, but by the third day, we were. Uh, you were exhausted, we, tired, and you need a vacation for the, the vacation. The first yeah, we, night, we, I thought I was in Nash Vegas. <laughs> and, and then the third night, I was, calling my, I was calling my wife, going, uh, uh, I want to come, come home. I'm, I want to come home. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm, I'm shaking. It's cold out here. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't fucking feel my legs. I, I got to go home. Yeah, we that's shaved a couple of years off of our lives that that, uh, that I, weekend. I'm but. sure you did. That's what you're supposed to do. It's I right remember uh, in California, when I was living in California, and my boyfriend's best friend, they were throwing his bachelorette party in California. Well, it's not the same as Nash Vegas or Vegas, but I'm telling you that he was calling in and somewhere around, I don't know, 2 a.m., 2.30, can you come get me? <laughs> <laughs> I went into this hotel room, you guys. There were stripper cards fucking everywhere. Really? There was cans of beer all over the place. There was booze. The bachelor was late, just passed yeah. out on the bed and a couple like other booze. dudes. It was funny. And I'm like, he goes, can you come get me? Uh, you know, this, is, <laughs> this is before Uber, too. This is all uh, before well. Uber. You know, so I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess I'll go to Hollywood and pick your ass up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was um, interesting. It was pretty, pretty funny, but glad you had a great time. That's yes. good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know what, Rocco, I'll tell you another thing. So yes, the soap has been keeping me busy. So I, here I am making soap before this pandemic. So um, I, I definitely want to thank all my fans and, and friends for supporting my little business because yep. I had no idea that that was going to take off. Now, during this pandemic, I have some friends that um, are writers. Um, I have a friend named A.J. Devlin that wrote this crime novel, and he asked me to write the blurb on the back of the book. Nice. That's pretty big time because awesome. he's, uh, his name is A.J. Devlin. He did this book called Rolling Thunder, and um, it's like uh, he plays Jed Hammerhead. He's a, a wrestler, a pro <laughs> wrestler, but he's also um, an investigator. So okay. it's very cool. Uh, fiction crime to crime and here he let me write a blurb on the back of a book and that's, that's awesome that that was awesome then there's another guy John Cosper another wrestling dude he wrote a book about um, this wrestler that was in the uh, late 30s early 40s her name was um, Elvira Snodgrass so here's names that maybe one would not know but I love wrestling history so he asked me to write the foreword. So I got to write a foreword wow. in the ballad of Ke cousin Elvira. Who can check this chick out? Look at her. Oh, that's wow. A, you know, what people out badass. there. That's a badass. I'm like, what would, wait, what would you say that was? The 30s, the 40s? Uh, this is late 30s, early late 30s. 40s. Yeah, okay, yeah. So ready to go. Ready to lock She's up. She's ready. And just some <laughs> of the stories and the pictures are just awesome. I just, I, I love the history about yeah. almost anything. Um, Pretty much. Uh, so I stayed busy doing that kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm waiting on mine, um, a book, a, a bio that I wanted to do with Glow. Um, you know, guys, right before the pandemic hit, we were getting ready to sign. And it's a smaller company. So if it's a smaller company, yeah. things are different. So we're still sitting there waiting for this particular company to say yay or nay. And you know what? If not, we'll try a different company and we'll. We'll, we'll try the bio 2021, see what happens. Very good that you're staying busy. Very yeah. good. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. 
some people aren't, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's tough. It's tough. It's been a tough year. All you musicians, musicians, you're not doing anything. You're not doing much, right? Well, we thank have God not, that's, uh, a, that's not our livelihood. I, I think, Arch, I think um, in three days, it'll be exactly a year since we played our last oh. show. Yeah. Got in the room to, you know, you, you think that, uh, you know, we'd be doing stuff online, you know, we haven't gotten in the same practice room together. So it's, you know, yeah. you, you, you feel the itch to create and go out and play, but uh, I know you do. It's, it's tough. And it's not just, again, it's not, we talk to a lot of musicians, a lot of comedians. Um, it's yes. not just, it's not just the bands or the, the actual talent. It's all the, you know, the people that, you know, take tickets, people that are the bartenders there, the photographers. Right. There's so right. many people that. Even the people know, cleaning up, you know, correct. it just trickles down to everybody and it's just so unfair and it's very sad. And hopefully you guys in 2021, it's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for us. Yeah, you know, everybody, everyone. it will. Well, it's it just got to go up. It's going to go up from here. <laughs> it will. It's gonna, and it's going to be gangbusters you guys because everyone is going to play everyone's going to want to get out yeah. they're going to have to probably pick and choose oh what concert do i go to i can't go to every single one <laughs> you know it'll it's going to be cool yeah i, I hope uh, I, I hope people have a higher appreciation you know and, and don't put stuff off like when you say ah oh, you know i'll catch the, i'll catch them next time they come to town or what what have no. you but now yeah. it's like okay let's go out and do it appreciate the yeah. art and you know yeah. what's going on what's the name of your uh your band guys uh the name of our band is war for the crown that's right. So, That's right. um, yeah, if yeah. you like a little heavier music, check it out. We sound like down. I will totally. And like stuff like that. Did you say down? Yeah. The, the band. I know, oh, okay. Of course I know down. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I knew, um, like that Snake vibe. Sabo, Snake Sabo used to, um, manage them. Yeah. And he's a good friend of ours. He's in, he's born and raised in your area. You guys, the, oh, the yeah. Skid Road dudes, those are, yeah. that's my neighbor. Rachel um, also does soap as well. Rachel Bowen's right down the street from me. Wow. He yeah, was, yeah. He was just here. Um, but that, you know, there, they grew up in Jersey. That's nice. their home, yeah. man. He told me so many stories <laughs> when he was growing up. You guys, it's so he, when he talks and he tells stories of shit, he, I laugh so hard. I would, I've known him for pretty, uh, quite a few years and he's good friends with my boyfriend. And every time we'll go over and hang out, he'll tell a story I've never heard before. And it's just, <laughs> you guys, you guys, it, all, everybody knows how to party over there. The East Coast, <laughs> yeah, there, there's always a story. There's, there's a, a story. Lot. He's still doing his thing too. And, and, uh, totally. Yes, he sure is. I mean, obviously they're not doing shit. Yeah. And they are not happy with that. They were doing really good in Europe. Again, they started touring a lot back in your uh, back there because you know, you know, the metalheads back there. Yeah, love their music. Oh, sure, hardcore, hardcore totally. out there in Europe. Yes, it is. You'll get it back, guys. Promise. You'll be on the road soon. Yeah. <laughs> so l l let's bring it back to the days of Glow. You were yes. the first Glow girl signed. Is that right? I was. Oh, gee. Yes, and you. Yep. Yes. OG. Oh, First one, Mondo Guerrero was up my trainer and everybody knows the Guerreros. Yeah. And um, Mondo had said to everybody that was in the ring, uh, learning how to wrestle, which one of you girls can slam your head into the turnbuckle <laughs> land on your back? Oh my God. Here I am 21 years old. I can do it. I was the first one to raise my hand or the first idiot. Yeah. However you want to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, tried to slam my hand, head into the turnbuckle and land on my back, whatever that was. Anyway, David McLean, I saw that and said, she's hired. That's all they wanted. They wanted girls that weren't afraid that were going to give a hundred I always gave 110% no matter what. He goes, Hollywood, you were my first glow girl hired. He said Americana was after you. And then Lisa Moretti, who ended up being Ivory in yep. the WWE, yeah. was the third girl hired. He goes, I couldn't lose with you three. He said, this That's was fun. great. That's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, That's awesome. that was the story of that. And um, I did four seasons with them. Yeah, you went, you went all the way through. I did. I was the only the one pilot. that went all the way through. Yes, from the pilot. Nobody yeah. else did that. And, you know, thank you for recognizing that because it was cool. The girls that came in afterwards, we had girls coming in on the third and fourth season when first and second season girls left. They just, you know, yeah. it's not for everybody. That's a hard sure. sport. And to do it for four years, I was burnt out on that fourth year. I was just like, oh, I want to be a 20-year-old. I want to go out and party. I want to be <laughs> able to party, go yeah. to my friend's bands play, have a boyfriend steadily. I want to do my thing without someone breathing down my neck like my father saying, you have curfew. You can't do this. You can't do – so it and was time to 
give it up. Let's be honest. At, the, at that time, that's like good, th those are good years to be out in the party scene. <laughs> that's right. I know. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I know all about that. Yes. I was out there in the, I graduated 81. So mm -hmm. I was in those clubs. Yeah. Um, right after that. And um, I wish I would have been a little bit older so that I could have seen Van Halen just because they're a California band and, and went to their parties that were in their backyard. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, that was before. That's awesome. Before me. I would have liked oh. to have been born in maybe 53. 1953, I could have seen some really cool bands in the 60s, the late 60s. Mm. Um, that would have been kind of cool to see. But, you know, it is what it is. I think I would I would have liked to have seen some seventies bands, like oh, those like, too. like like what I would have loved to have seen would to, for me I would have loved to have seen Kiss in like seventy five, yes. right before yes. right before they exploded like like they're big but they're not like you know seventy seven Kiss seventy eight. Right. I right. want to see you that. And like, my boyfriend will have a lot to talk about. You should I should have went in his in his man cave. We've got that, that's it. Get him out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! That's awesome. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a yes. big Kiss fan. But like, yeah, now, how, like, how about like? I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but how about seeing like? You, you know, can. I'll let you. We'll stay a little longer. We <laughs> don't have to be done at eight. He'll talk we about Kiss for, for seven hours. How about like? <laughs> I know. No, no, how about this? Ready? How about seeing like uh, late Elvis? Like like yes. 72, 72 right. Elvis, like just right. fucking killing it. That would have been cool. Do you watch so not, Axis TV? Do you watch Axis? You know what? TV? That's one of the most disturbing From things. From time to time, yeah. I don't. Okay. I don't how do you get it? I can't it's get on it. your cable. It's not my, yeah. oh, it's not, I can't get it. It's your cable, it. that's why. Yep. Yeah, my it's cable, cable sucks. Man, okay, good. Yeah. Sometimes Axis just will play some stuff. They did a Tom Petty one last night, or not last night, but uh, that one was really cool. Just, you know, or maybe that was Reels. No, Reels, R E E L Z, Reels. Yes. Do you have that? I do. I have Direct TV, so Direct TV seems to have all of that gotcha. stuff. But, man, watching all of that stuff is, is really. Yeah, I like a good old stuff. concert. Yeah, me too. Me yes. too. Yeah, I just watched something good. good I'm uh, a, a real big ZZ Top fanatic, and and they had nice. a, a, a good uh, a good documentary on them. On I think it was Reels as well. I think um, I saw that as well. Did you see that new video of theirs that's out? Yeah, you seen it? <laughs> no, yeah, it's, right. I, I was like, holy shit! Same, yeah. as, just as good as the other ones. Yeah. Still doing it, man. God. Yes. It, I've seen them yes. a, a couple times. I went to their residency in Vegas two years ago. Um, oh, nice. You know, saw them Queen would have been a good one for the 70s, you guys. Queen. Oh, God. Wow. Queen. Yes. Queen. Bucket list. Bro, yes. I, I'll tell you what. I, I It's not it, but I did go see them with Adam Lambert, and they were fucking so phenom my boyfriend phenomenal. In Vegas. Did, phenomenal. Yes, I heard. Jersey. I heard. They came to Jersey. Newark, they played. Phenomenal. Awesome. They, they and so, like, you, you could feel it, the energy. Like, it's not it. Yeah. But you feel, you know what, what it could have been, yeah. possibly? So that was a great show. That was good. I bet that was a good show. Uh, concerts are great. See how much yeah. we miss concerts? I know. I, yes. Yes. You know what? I got to ask you. I, here's a good question for all of us since we're talking yes. music. My first concert, I didn't want to see this particular concert, but my boyfriend in junior high took me to see the Kinks. And I went okay. to see the Kinks. I was not, a, at that time, I wasn't, uh, I was not appreciating the Kinks. And I was looking around as a teenager. I'm like, why is everybody wearing glasses? Why does everybody look so old? <laughs> <laughs> That was just my first impression, you guys. Okay, because yeah, 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 yeah. everybody looked old to me. And then my second concert was the Clash opened up for the Who, Ooh, and that wow. was cool. Where the was Clash that? was that was at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Okay. So I'm thinking that was eighty or eighty one. Okay. Oh my gosh! And that was my first outdoor concert. I I was That's dating awesome. this guy. I was dating this guy, and I go, I'm gonna use the restroom. I'll be right back. I'll go with you. I go, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I can go by myself. Don't go with me. Mm. I went to the farthest bathroom to like look at all just people. Just yeah. you know, so good. Just so yes, thank you. And I yeah. knew right then and there. I'm like, oh, this is unbelievable. Look at all these good looking kids. Look at these people. Look at everybody who's into it, just like I am. Yeah. This is I just knew that when I, I would. Um, when I when I stumble be going upon to a, a friend, lot more concerts. Yes. Um, when I stumble upon a friend that's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've never been to a show. I'm like, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. What? what? Wait, you, you, ever, wait, do, you, you, you never saw a band? You never, and they're like, <laughs> no, not really. I'm like, fucking weirdo. Oh, but, what's uh, your first concert? Hey, first, what's your first, first concert? First concert is Arch. Kiss Nassau Coliseum 1990 oh. Hot in the Shade Tour. 
Remember wow. when they were like pretty, nah, not glam, but like they yeah, were a little, they were, they were a little happier. Yeah, yeah but, they uh, were happier. And then not, not shortly after that, the theater at Madison Square Garden, they have like a theater, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't yeah. know, is the Beacon Theater or, or but. Oh, uh, I have the Beacon Theater. It's right uh, there on Broadway. Yeah, Ozzy. Yes. With a, with yes. a shirtless, beardless, bell-bottom wearing Zach cool. Wilde. Oh, I love oh. it. That was a good show. Uh, I saw Rat open up for Ozzy. Uh, I don't know what tour it was. You, oh, it was 84, 1984, whatever that tour was. Mm-hmm. I have my, I have ticket stubs somewhere over here. I'm looking Rock, at my drawer. I have old ticket stubs. Rock, what was your first show? Yeah. My first show, I want to say, was, I think I was in the third grade. It was Billy Joel. Oh, nice. good for you. That's a, that's, did your mom take you? I think my, my aunt took me. How cool. Um, what a cool aunt. You know, and then, like, I feel like third grade was like, okay, now I'm going to branch out to some different music. Then it was like, yeah, but you're third Hanley grade. And like, uh, Twisted yes. Sister. I but. never saw Twisted. That's, I would have liked to. Now, they had cool videos. Now, I did get to see Van Halen like three, three, oh, four, or like with, four with, uh, years ago, five years I ago. I did that concert. The, uh, yeah, they, they, they played the garden and then somewhere else. real quick. I know we're going off on a tangent, but like, yo, it's okay. One, one of the best shows ever. Tell me giant stadium, the police, like 10 years ago, nine, like the, when they came back that reuniting, you know? Yeah. I bet that, that was good. Now my brother's a huge influence on me, right? My, Are he younger or he's older? older? He's about okay. fifty-seven. He's I think my he, age. He's fifty-seven. He's my age then. Yeah, so, my age. You ready for this? I'm yeah, like, I'm, I'm like, listening. I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't really want to go to this show. He's like, you're coming with me. I'm like, all right, I'll go. Like, I was like 15, 14, 15. He's like, you'll enjoy it. Just trust me. Now, at 15 years old, I saw, you know, Kiss with the bombs and I saw uh, Ozzy, right? The big stage shows, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's like, all right, come on. We're going to the East Rutherford to Giant Stadium. We get the Giant Stadium and we're going to see Mr. Born in the USA, Mr. Springsteen. And I'm like, eh. Springsteen, whatever. Born in the U.S. God bless. Nineteen. Looking great, row. wasn't it? For someone who does not have a bomb or a smoke or a light effect, he yes. fucking came on that stage and yeah. commanded the entire arena from oh. the first note. I said, "Who? Where the oh. fuck is this guy about?" Okay. I went out and all my Christmas money, whatever money I had, I just kept buying oh, CDs. That's and so eating. good to hear. Fucking Springsteen. That's so good. I never got to see him. And I didn't, you know, I'm watching those um, interviews that I was telling you about. I learned so much because I just wasn't sure if I was a fan or not. But how can yeah. he not be? But I heard he's great. I heard that's a great show. Yeah. I Let's see. I did Ozzy and the school. Oh, Us Festival. See, you guys weren't even, you were too young. Us Festival was Us 83. Festival. Oh, us, oh, us, us. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. 1983. <clears throat> and that was Van Halen. It was Motley Crue. It was the Scorpions. It was Triumph, uh, Quiet Riot. Did I say, oh, and Judas Priest. Judas Priest. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking great. It was so good. Was, was that was that titled the Sober Tour? Right. Everybody was sober on that tour. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Not Van Halen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had, I had a ride down there. This girl from, from work took us down there, me and another friend, mm-hmm. coworker. And she left. She goes, man, you guys, my stomach's hurting. I'm not feeling well. I go, what? I go, you're leaving. She goes, I'll catch up with you later. And we're talking about a huge festival concert <laughs> you guys we never saw her again i don't even <laughs> we had no ride home and we were like uh, we had, we're an hour and a half from our home we're out in this cold ass place with no lights no yeah. cell phone so we had to go we had to we uh we had to go to someone's house knock on the door borrow their phone call his mom and dad to come get us because we were just kids and the, and the crazy part is she's never seen him to this day <laughs> Right. He's gone. Yeah. That's uh-huh. it. Never seen exactly. him again. Exactly. I didn't. <laughs> no, he was our coworker. Anyway, that was such a great, great concert. Concerts are great, you guys. They just they are. Now let me ask you, so you have your band. Now are you also do you do wrestling? Tell me a little bit about yeah. you guys. So so just I, I've been a lifelong wrestling fan. fan. Got you know, it. Fanatic. Perfect. Uh, I'm Archie's wrestling tutor. 
So I get them up to speed on what's going on in the, the world of professional wrestling. Yeah, sometimes yeah, my, no- my knowledge stops with almost. Yeah, I get the, it. The Rock era, almost. Yeah, I think. No, I get it. I, yeah, but uh, you know I, what? I, it is for some, and it's not for others. Hey, my boyfriend had no idea what glow was. He goes, "What is that?" I mean, he just did not know. Yeah. You know, some people know the wrestling stuff, and some people mm-hmm. don't. No biggie, Very you know. True. To each his own. I'm glad he doesn't. I'm just like hey, you do your music, <laughs> yeah. your music entertainment, and I'm sports entertainment. It's it was perfect, and it works yeah. well. Yes, it does. What it was the tape, what was like the the television schedule? I was interested in in Glow. If you can peel back the curtain a little bit. I mean, it yeah. obviously. Um, you know, was it a, a, a weekly thing? Did you tape shows for, you know, a certain period of time? Because obviously it, it, it was considered episodic television, right? Yeah. Uh, back then, let's see, we were on, let's see, 86, 87, 88, and 89. So when we would tape, we would tape on a Saturday in front of a live audience. And we'd have one, two, three, probably four cameras. Uh, and then we would tape a shit ton. So we'd start at two in the afternoon <laughs> And we'd go to like eight o'clock at night. Uh-huh. Uh, so I didn't just have one match. I might have four matches now. You know, that back yeah. then too, they wanted us to remember, they wanted us to write down our matches. You know, you just, okay. who, most people, you just had a beginning, a middle mm. and the end. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, um, um, I'm looking at my earbuds. They're telling me I have 20% left. That sucks. What's going on with my earbuds? They must be old. Um, so, um, so yeah, I might do four matches a night with the Battle Royal at the end, but we want, he had us writing down our matches. I had to remember everything. But when you're young and you're in your 20s, you do remember shit. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's when you get older, you get that disease. What is it called? Uh, can't remember. CR. CRS, I have CRS. CRS, can't remember shit. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty hardcore. And then we'd have sketches to do afterwards. So once the audience left, now we're doing those little sketches that we did. Mm. And I did a lot of the um, PSA commercial stuff where don't drink and drive, don't do drugs. And they wanted to heal, like myself, to um, to do those commercials. Right. So. I'm all, we have lots of stories about those too. Crazy. <laughs> all right, so give us one, give us one then. Give, give us yeah. a good one of one of those. One of the stories is the director's in front and the camera's there, and you've got all your uh, all the people in the background um, crew. Yeah. They would hold up signs, you guys, that would say Hollywood. Let's get high. Let's go <laughs> smoke. So I'm trying to do these damn PSAs, and they're putting up signs uh, behind the director's face. They didn't let him see what they were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am trying not to fuck up, and <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. I love it. <laughs> yeah, Fun that's stuff. awesome. Yeah, you were yes. so you were saying how, how you, you play a heel role, but I think you were like super ahead of your time as like the cool heel. You know what I mean? That's like, what they said. Thank like, you. That's like, nice like to say. In later years, how like DX was or NWO, you were right. the cool heel because everybody liked you. I mean, I, I can speak from you know that's my nice. friends Thanks. and and you know obviously you were you were you know one of the most yeah, popular. I, yeah, I, you know what? So you just never know if you're going to. You know, how do you know if you're going to be popular? I just was going to be just my character. And I thought, well, what is Hollywood? What does she do? What 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 does she wear? So I started making her wear kind of what this girl in the 80s be now. I'm like, let's do fishnets. Let's do some gloves. Let's crimp our hair. Let's look like those chicks in, you know, in Motley Crue videos if we can or something, whatever. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. I don't know what we were thinking. So, but, you know, it was fun to play the heel. That's for sure. That that I loved. I see my cat somewhere. Where'd you go? <laughs> She came to visit. I have a kitten. We have two kittens. Oh, she very came nice. In to see what was she was just coming in to say what's up. <laughs> That's you know what? That's not the first cat that visits that visited our show, Rock. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. We uh, yeah, we, they we, like they like to come in and see what's happening. Yeah, what's no, going they just, they just on? They just want to know. They just want to see what's up. Yeah. How did, how did uh, your character like you said you, you you started to dress up a little more like like a Molly crew, almost like the videos, you know, like that. Yeah. So how much like uh like say did you have over your character i mean could you a lot well that's good very good oh yeah i know well you know what i would do i hate and i hate having to go can i wear this they had so many girls there that i was just like i am not going to wardrobe i'm just going to buy this for me and i'm going to buy another one for vine so that we kind of match yeah and if they say something they say something if they don't they don't they never said anything so that's why you'll see a lot of costumes i um 
we did our corsets towards the end and then I also had this pink and black thing. And then we did like uh, this animal stuff, like the, the zebra print and the uh, the leopard print type of yeah. thing. So there's a couple of different outfits. And that's just, you know, we no one told us no. So we just I just kept bringing in the outfits and, well, and wearing them, hopefully that they were going to stay on. Remember, these aren't outfits that they are making for the girls. These are outfits I'm buying, you know, at some lingerie <laughs> yeah, yeah. store somewhere. Yeah, okay. So, gotcha. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, my so God. So they weren't they weren't really sewn yeah. to stay on. So I would wear other stuff underneath just so just in case, but mm-hmm. we played the, um, uh, let's see, we were in Boston at the, the channel, which is not there anymore. And I was wondering one night why they were really, really screaming for Hollywood. And I looked down and this had opened up all uh-huh. the way. And I'm like, <laughs> ah, <laughs> oh, I can't. oh, that's why you guys are cheering for yeah. me so hard. And as soon as one of the somebody threw me in a sweatshirt and they booed me, I put the sweatshirt <laughs> on. <laughs> I got booed. Oh well, I probably lost that. You know, heels didn't win either. You know, Rocco, they just yeah, yeah. they weren't winning a lot back then. They finally, because they were booing the good girl all the time, that they finally lost started having Hollywood win matches. So could could you cool. give could you give me like a simple explanation on um just the 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 anatomy of a match? I'm I'm always intrigued about a match. How do you like uh, it's discussed prior. It's like uh, I mean I don't want to like, you know, give away secrets Everyone or whatever. Much knows. It's, yeah. it's sports it's, entertainment. Yeah. It, it, right. It's, all right. So I assume it's it's discussed before. Okay, you're winning this one. Okay. All right. You're getting the belt. Whatever the case may be. From but some there, people don't believe that. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, oh, it's not, it's not. But all I can tell you is, or what I, when you're landing, all of those are real. When someone's oh, picking yeah. you up and doing an atomic drop on you, you know, it's up to you to sell it. Does it look like it hurt? You know, and I yeah. think so, I, we, we could sell pretty well. So th- um, I just believe a beginning, a middle, and an end. And then, yeah. you know, it cuts down on injuries. That's what it does. It cuts down on injuries. Good to kind of know what's coming up. Of course. What, yeah. All right. So another question I would have the, the, the whole, it's like a dance. I, I, you know, yes. you're in rhythm with another yeah. person, you know? So yeah. are, is it, is everything choreographed or it's like, all right, I'm going to hit him up with this move. Oh, I'm going to get this move. I'm going to let him do this move, but you, not everything, not everything is no, okay. because I always like, I like surprise on people's faces. If you just keep saying, you know, going over what you did, uh, you know, for the cameras on, on Friday, yeah. uh, beforehand, I always like the look of surprise on a girl's face. So I would come into the ring about 15 minutes earlier and I would stick props underneath like rope um drinks uh <laughs> wow. i'm serious and yeah. then i would go to the audience i'd go to the audience who were drinking beer and uh-huh. i'd grab their drink i might like, drink it uh-huh. and then throw the rest of it in someone's face and give it back <laughs> or, <laughs> seriously right and they, and they exactly. love every second and of it they love it or i'd say hey which one of you guys has a belt i need your belt hollywood and they'd be undoing <laughs> their pants as fast as they could here they'd take my pants <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> and I would take that belt and stick that over the girl's throat and throw her into the audience with it. But yes, so I think that makes a good character when you're thinking yeah. outside the box and doing more than you're supposed to do. I'm like yeah, I said, yeah, I yeah. gave 110 on my character. <laughs> I love doing it, you know. And, you know, I still do a little stuff here and there. And we do our conventions and obviously no conventions this year. But we did, um, you know, the Comic Cons. Uh, and I, there's always in New York, there's always the big event i'm always called in uh-huh. to do some of those and then with the glow netflix that came on who knew that netflix sure. would do glow yes i, I caught the first season i loved yeah, it the first season was good the ones after that started kind of going downhill yeah. a little bit they did not get renewed uh for the fourth mm-hmm. season and covid came around who knows really what the real reasons are but you know i'm grateful that they did that that just put glow back up on the map again and made certain people you know some people go god i remember that oh my gosh so i loved it anything that promotes our show is a positive you know some of the girls weren't some of the the, the glow girls loved it some didn't some were upset because they're like that's not our show well it it wasn't a carbon copy and plus it's television so when it's tv you gotta 
you got to have, uh, you got to have drama, you know, our director yep. did not sit there and do cocaine at all. The, <laughs> the, he loved to gamble. He, he was, he uh, liked to gamble yeah, and he yeah, didn't yeah. Do cocaine. And man, if you were caught doing any of that, you were out so fast. I mean, we weren't even supposed to have guys in our rooms and uh, it was just too many rules. I almost didn't, couldn't get to, I almost didn't get to do the Donahue show because of that. <laughs> you had somebody in your room. I'm like, really? We're not supposed to have what? What, what do you mean we can't have anybody yet? Well, oh my god i go what, who put this rule into place <laughs> now would you have like you ever you ever see the movie a league of their own i remember with, it yeah with, uh, so, so Tom Ma- Hanks. madonna was on the team and she was the little uh the little Force. floozy <laughs> yeah sure yes. <laughs> for lack of a better word you're correct and uh yeah. she uh now, would you don't have to name any names, but what were things like that? Where guy, were you guys sneaking in boys? Big like, bad you know? mama, big bad mama. I'll just say, <laughs> hey, big bad mama always has guys in her room. What's the deal? <laughs> uh, That's it great. Was funny, but I didn't put. I didn't want to throw her under the bus, so I didn't say one word. Hi, kitty. Can you give us you a good dorm hello? story? Yes. Uh, let's see. How about on the road story? Hey, kitty, come over here. This is um. This is Lala. Hi, Lala. Hi, Lala. Okay, she wants to go. This is Lala. Okay, she's going. Bye bye. Uh, we were on the road somewhere uh, where it was cold, and we decided we bought uh, firecrackers. And we decided to light them in front of the director's room. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember we lit them, and we all ran back to our rooms. And as soon they went off, obviously before we got to our room, and my phone started ringing immediately. Mine, and it was yeah. the director, Hollywood. Did you hear that? I'm like, hear what? I got, and I'm like, <gasps> try not to do that because we were running back. He goes, who put those firecrackers by my door? <laughs> oh my god! We played drinking games, quarters. Yeah. You know, there was lots of that. We, you know, we had more stories in in Miami, where a couple of the girls came knocking on the door, and I opened the door, and they were nude. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! You we're know, going out. Just, yeah, we're going. You know, just yeah. funny stuff that you that you ain't nothing bad, nothing evil. Just you know, stuff that you do when you're 20 years old. You're just cracking up and you're bored too. You know, if you have to stay into your room and you're not supposed to do anything, mm-hmm. and they they're keeping. Oh God, I have another one. We weren't supposed to go to Tijuana. They specifically looked at me and said, Hollywood, don't you dare go to Tijuana because we're in San Diego tomorrow. I don't want you guys getting arrested. Well, we had decided before he told us no that we were going. So I go to the girls. I go, let's go. No, we can't go. I go, you guys, we said yes before he said no. So let's go. We got busted. We came back over the border and somebody was, I had this stupid uh, uh, Hard Rock Cafe bag that said Tijuana and a (laughs) t-shirt from Hard Rock Cafe that said TJ. So yeah, we got busted. Anybody that hung out with me was in trouble. Let's just yeah, say if you awesome. hung out with Hollywood, you were getting fined big time. So talk about um, you know, obviously your life change. You're in your early twenties. Uh, you go from you know, you're you you no longer have anonymity. You know, now you're on TV and people reckon yeah. when when you know talk about how it was when people recognized you when you went out. Well, we kind of really didn't know until we got to the East Coast and we did Donahue. Uh, just going through airports and stuff, people were like, oh, you know, mm. and then you were like, oh, my gosh, people know who we are. So, um, you know, it was cool. I, I I never, ever let anything like that go to my head. I just enjoyed wrestling. Mm. I enjoyed uh, being in front of a crowd. And that took some time because the first time that we were in front of an audience, I was pretty nervous. I just couldn't look them in the eye. And finally, afterwards, I, fit, you know, when you're figuring out the wrestling and the moves and who your character is, now you're in control. And so now I was in control of them and not them and with me anymore. Yeah. Um, he didn't also, our director did not want the show on in Vegas. So we didn't even see ourselves on TV oh, while wow. we were in Las Vegas. No, it was not on. So That's he a did that awkward. for a reason as well. Yeah, uh, it was uh, awkward. He didn't want us to get big heads, I guess, you know, you know how girls are. Come on. You got 30 girls touring. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine today? 30 girls on a tour, Ugh. the drama, the, 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 the jealousy. But, you know, back then we all were a good team of girls. We, nobody, we were all on TV. What was there to be jealous about? You know, yeah. we all got along really well. It was later days that everyone turned different and this and this and who knows. Mm. You know, 
there's a little <laughs> animosity out there with some of them. You know, and obviously women's wrestling has been around, you know, forever but i yeah. feel like with glow you know especially a character like yours it really brought it to the forefront of sports entertainment right and like all these things that you see now like total divas and and yeah we were doing it before them yeah 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 so that's got that, that's got to feel good to know that you were you did this yes. all this shit already we broke the glass ceiling. Is that what they say? Yeah. yeah. We were the first to break yeah. that. Yeah. Because if you look now, you'll see WWE girls having the, um, uh, you know, the, the battle royals, 30 girls in a ring. Well, we did that. And we yeah. did that in 1986, 87, 88, and 89. And the cool thing is, is we also go to CAC, which is the Cauliflower Alley Club, every year in Vegas. And they were, they're always giving an award to some of the wrestlers they gave our award out about four years ago to the gorgeous ladies of wrestling you'll have kia and you'll have you know some of the other wrestlers that were like we watched you and we wanted to be you guys and you know back then no one really said they wanted to be a woman wrestler not in the 80s they didn't look at it as yeah. something empowering back then it was kind of looked down upon yeah. uh, it, no one talked about it and then later it just you know it took some time and so to see the ladies today wrestling they're they're definitely um they look good and they are very good athletes so to see them wrestling today i'm like wow look at them go they look badass they could they can wrestle well yeah, we, um, really well. you know, obviously when you guys came out, it was a stark contrast of uh, women's wrestlers looking like the fabulous Mula or right. Hollywood. Like that. <laughs> Very different. Yeah, like this, like this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is Elvira. Hey, look at those outfits. You know, some people still love this outfit. I, I would do this. Elvira like, showing you know? some leg there. Jeez. <laughs> totally. I bet you she can cook a good egg. <laughs> 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 that's cool yeah, the, the, this it, it's pretty cool these ladies are you know these are the legends so you know what without this without this woman right here it yeah. wouldn't be this that's awesome so thank you to these ladies uh you know in the 20s and 30s and 40s and so on and so forth that laid that ground work for all of us and for the ladies today you still Pretty watch cool. wrestling from time to time? Time to time, not as much, you guys. I'm doing soap. My thing is soap these days. That is my new love. I love it. She's clean living. It. It's uh, uh, <laughs> <da-da-da-da>. <laughs> it's, got, it's got some clean living. There you go. Exactly. So I just wanted to say thank you so thank much you. for having me on. It was fun. I'll tell you what. This was one of my favorite interviews because... Let's do another one in 2021 after this COVID oh, yeah. stuff and catch up. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you can come on and talk about everything you've been talking about for the last, you know, and it's good. No, but I'm saying it's good to just shoot the shit with somebody that's uh, really cool down to earth and, you yeah. know, to hear a little bit about your career. And, and I, I, we enjoyed it. That Thank you. Oh, you guys are awesome too. Um, tell, tell everybody where, where they can find you. And I know you do, uh, I see you doing those workout videos in the morning too. Oh, those yeah. are pretty good cool. Good for you, Rocco. You're watching. Yeah. Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. So <laughs> on social media, if you're a Twitter person, I'm at uh, glow Hollywood. There's um, also a, Instagram, official Glow Hollywood. Yep. If you're into my soaps, I've got Hollywood Botanica with a K. And then there's a Facebook that's Jeannie Bassone, which is my, or Hollywood Productions, it might say on there. But on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I usually do a little exercise. Not a lot. Sometimes I'm doing them incorrect. I apologize. I'll, you know, I was doing some deadlifts today or yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I might have <laughs> done them. I kept calling them, I don't know what I was calling them, but... I was my the back of my legs were hurting, but I think yeah. I was doing them right. Good. So Good yeah, catch me on social media. If you have a question, you know, message me. I answer back, don't I, Rocco? Yes, you do. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, we appreciate you giving us a little bit of your time. We hope to talk to you again next year. Let's do en- it. Enjoy this holiday season and stay safe. Thank you so yeah. much. Bye bye. Okay, take, take care. care. Bye bye. All right. Bye. Everybody, that was Jeannie Bassone. Hollywood. So cool. So down to earth. I know I say that about a lot of people, but we only get down to earth people on this podcast. Don't we rock? No, listen, dude, if, if you told third grade uh, me, I'd be talking to Hollywood in 2020. I'd be like, what? Um, nah, she's very, very cool. Someone who, who gained popularity <laughs> in the eighties and is still relevant today. 
And you definitely <laughs> took a fucking gummy, you fucking dummy. Piece of shit. Nobody fucking liked you, you giggling hyena fucking cunt. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Sideways. Running. So with that being said, <laughs> Rock, do you have anything, anything to say to the people? If you listen to this podcast, you should probably go get your fucking head examined because Archie is a fucking stupid piece of shit. And I am handsome, charming, and charismatic. You just listen to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>